Hey guys, it's me, and today I'm here with my September wrap up. It's also the first time I'm filming at my dorm, so if things don't go right, I'm sorry, but we have to figure things out. Also, because I'm at my dorm, I don't have every single book I'm gonna talk about with me, I only have one. So, <laughs> we're gonna have to look at this. Sorry, I'm just reading a lot. Yeah, in the month of September, I read nine books, I'm gonna talk about them all, and yeah, I'll have timestamps and uh, content warnings in the description down below so if you're interested in any of that check there the first book i finished in the month of september is uncomfortable labels my life as as we care artistic trans women by kate dale uh, a galley of this book to net galley and give us four to five stars it is, is a this is already out so i'm not giving you the release date for because it was a galley you know uh, <laughs> but this is a memoir of kate dale who is a gay autistic trans woman and it's about basically how those things affect her life and yeah I really enjoyed it it's very interesting and it's it is very interesting it has a really good mix between facts and research and like personal experience how she experienced everything you know I feel really I don't like reviewing memoir stuff because I just it feels weird, you know, to review someone's life. But then my main problem that I had with this book was it's pretty short, but it took me so long to read, not just for multiple reasons, honestly. But one thing I noticed a lot was that it was very repetitive and just dragged out. And I feel like, honestly, this could have even been shorter or <laughs> I don't know, but it just... I don't know, it just dragged at times and I didn't really like it because of it. And the next book I read in the month of September is Buried the Lead by Gabby Dunn and Chloe Wo, which I gave Shutify Stars and is another galley I received from that galley. And this book comes out October 8th. And yeah, this is a graphic novel and we follow a woman who is an intern at this newspaper, I believe. I don't know, but some type of journalism thing. And the book basically starts off with this guy has been murdered and his wife got arrested for it. They think she did it, but the main problem that they have is that their son has disappeared. No one knows where he is. And the wife doesn't want to talk to anyone, and none of the journalists, not the police, no one, except our main character. Why, we don't know. <laughs> yeah, I actually really enjoyed reading this book, this graphic novel, and I flew through it. But I also had some problems with it and I wouldn't necessarily recommend it because I don't think I think most people like will read it more critically than I do, I don't know. And <laughs> will be like, oh this is bad because it's not that great. The mystery is very basic. <laughs> it is not really very basic, but just like everything isn't well developed. And I know some people who don't read graphic novels it's like, oh yeah, that's just a thing of graphic novels, but it isn't. I have read a lot of great, well-developed graphic novels, this was one of them. I've, the characters fell flat, the story fell flat, the romance fell flat, very unnecessary was a love triangle, and I honestly don't get why. That's a very open ending, like they set up for something else, but this could change. But at the moment, it's not marked as a series, so I, I have to like also take off from that, but it's, it's a fun read, you know? <laughs> the next book I read in the month of September is actually one I was really excited for, and it's The Great Year by Kim Leggett, which I give 2 out of 5 stars and is another gallery from that gallery, which comes out October 8th. Except if you live in Flanders or the Netherlands, it's already out. <laughs> I just know because I follow like Dutch publishers and like, the Dutch publisher company of this book made a huge deal of it, of the fact that they were the first ones to publish it. So. I also went to a bookstore and I saw it, that's also I know, but yeah, I, <laughs> I got this from Nagali, so who is she? It takes place in this like dystopian kind of setting in which it is believed that women have magic and that's a bad thing, apparently. So <laughs> I also believe that this magic comes true once a girl turns 16. So in the year that you turn 16, as a girl you're sent on your grace year, which basically means you are sent away with all the girls in your town to like a remote place and based for like a year which is insane but oh well <laughs> and 
it's basically the purpose is for them to get rid of the magic to use it all up or something i don't know the logic behind it doesn't really make sense but well and yeah we follow a girl who is turning us to be in a glacier i was so excited for this book because the premise just sounded very interesting and when i started reading it i was immediately satisfied like it was just so intriguing it pulled me in from the start i liked our main character i liked the surroundings and i just i liked the whole idea of everything and i just i had a great time with the first half it was a four star honestly and i could have become a five star depending on this what the second half would be but instead it became a three star which still upsets me because i wanted to love this book so much because first of all the cover is gorgeous the premise is great i don't know it just ugh, i was so excited about it but basically <laughs> Right at the end of the first half, we got introduced into a romance, and then the second half, between the first and second half, there was like a time jump. And in a time jump, that romance develops. And we missed that development. And the entirety of the second half, our main character's decisions in that half, is entirely based on that romance. Which, eventually, everything that the author did with the second half is very interesting, and I really like what she did with it. But because it was built on a romance that wasn't developed, I just didn't care and it just it took away a lot from my enjoyment i feel like again this could be just such a great book if that romance was just developed a little more the next book i read i actually picked up on a whim and that's Peter of hand by jm berry which i gave four out of five stars to i've owned this book for a while and i've heard some amazing things about it but i just never really got around to reading it and then just randomly i got in the mood to read it and i just read it and yeah in case you don't know what Peter Pan is about, Peter Pan is about Wendy Darling and her two brothers who always like dream of Neverland and Peter Pan until one day Peter Pan actually comes into their room to find his shadow and because Peter Pan wants a mother for his lost boys, he takes Wendy with him to Neverland and of course Wendy doesn't want to leave her brothers behind so all three of them get rushed away to Neverland and yeah it's a very interesting read and yeah <laughs> i did a lot of research after reading this book about it and like the themes and everything and it just it's so interesting <laughs> to see this kind of things that i didn't, uh, didn't necessarily see it i saw it as a very innocent story about growing up and no not wanting to grow up and then eventually being like okay growing up isn't that bad you know <laughs> I thought it was about that, which honestly is a valid interpretation of Peter Pan, but if you look more into it, and originally it was a play, and to see like some like some characters being played by the same actor, and how that kind of imply things, it's so interesting to look into. If you read Peter Pan, I highly recommend looking into everything about it, because it's very, very interesting, the whole history behind Peter Pan, and it can shift your view on the story a lot. But even besides just that, it's just a very interesting story. I really enjoyed it. I had a great time in it. I was just completely engrossed into the magic of Neverland. And I watched the Disney adaptation, like the animated movie, right after reading the book. And honestly, it messes the mark so much. I feel uh, Peter Pan, the movie takes place in a couple of hours, while the book takes place over a pretty long span of time. And it just, it's, it's, it's so interesting. And yeah, I just had it. And it is definitely a book I will reread because I feel like every single time you will reread it, you'll get something new out of it. And then we have come to my favorite book of the month, and that's There Is the Greatest Not Okay by Deep Kalam. I still want to pronounce it up, so I'm so sorry. And it is five of five stars. This is the first book in the duology. The sequel just recently got announced, and it's called There Is the Great Deserves Better, and I felt that. <laughs> And I'm so excited for the sequel. It is a well rounded story, and you can read it as a standalone because it was a standalone until I think last week or something. <laughs> but I'm so excited for the sequel. This book is about Darius the Great, his mom's side of the family is from Iran, and his dad's side of the family is from America. He has lived his whole life in America and doesn't really have a feel with his Iran side, you know. But he also doesn't feel like he belongs in America. And then one day, the family all of a sudden decides to go 
to a warm fun month they've never been there the mom has but for the rest nobody has been there <laughs> because the mom grew up there but, but they decided to go to a warm fun month because the grandfather is dying of an illness i want to say cancer but i'm not sure but yeah he's dying and so they want to spend time with him and the mom wants her children to really know her grandfather even though like we always see those shadows so they kind of know each other but like oh well and basically it's about there is the great you know fitting in that's the best <laughs> way to explain it it's great it's uh it's so precious my heart just exploded reading this book and i cried it made me feel all the feels like literally i felt so much and oh darius also deals with depression and also deals with that in a great way it's not necessarily about his depression at all but it does play a lot of an aspect in it he takes medication for it and is discussed in such a great way i love the portrayal of family in this the most because it's mostly about family this book and you can definitely tell it just i love the family in this so much and i kind of don't want to read the sequel because i know I kind of just have a feeling about the grandfather and i don't want to read that also there's a great friendship in this and yeah it's kind of also implied that darius is gay it's not entirely told in this book but like the synopsis of the first, second book starts off with Darius as a boyfriend so like he's definitely gay but <laughs> I liked how subtle was and was a male male friendship that didn't turn into a romance which I really liked and the next book I read it actually isn't a book it's a novella and it's Shadows by Jennifer Armand Child which I give two out of five stars and it is a prequel novella to the Lux series I'm helping through the Lux series so yeah I just I picked this up from my library because I was curious no, actually, I picked up all the books that I had left in the season of the library, and I wanted to read this because I hadn't finished the book in a while, and it's short, so I was like, let's read it. But yeah, this novella follows the brother of Damon, who's in a love interest in the main series. It's brother also had a romance of his own, which we learn a little bit about in the first two books of the love series, the third book. Not in the first book, that should do it, yeah. The first book, you learn a little bit about it, because I do recommend reading the first book before reading this because this doesn't explain the world well and I think you'll be confused reading this novella first even though in the timeline it comes first but oh well <laughs> and what was I saying uh, so yeah it follows Damon's brother's relationship um, that happened before the like, series and uh, we learned a bit about it in the first book but a lot more in the later books so yeah I wasn't the biggest fan of this novella as you can see every two to five stars and that's mainly because it just it had very bad case of install and like the main look series also has that but they kind of like it's not as bad because they don't actually really get together they just you can tell that they have a crush on each other and that they like each other but like you they're not together and this they meet and they date and they will die for each other that's literally how this goes it's just like <laughs> and it also because it didn't have that like I'm not gonna say enemies to lovers thing, but it didn't have that hate aspect to it that the Lux series has. It just also missed a lot of the banter between the two main characters in the series, and I was hoping we'd also get a little bit of that in this, but we didn't get anything. And my main problem with this book is that it had a lot of the same plot beats as Obsidian did, and in a way it makes sense, but I feel like we could have done it in a more unique way, but we didn't. It was very much like the same way that we did it in Obsidian. Then the next book I read is Aphrodite Made Me Do It by Tristan Mattia which I gave five five stars to and it's another galley I received from Bank Galley and it came out October 1st. It's already out when you see this. This is a collection of poetry but also some like collage art pieces throughout it and I really liked it. I think this is one that would be great to actually own physically but yeah I didn't. I read a copy of it from Bank Galley but <laughs> It was related. I felt like I was looking at someone's art journal and that's always great. It meant that it was very personal and I connected to a lot of it even though I didn't go through the same stuff as the author went through. Like is the describing in a poetry is still a lot of things that resonated with me and I felt like I could relate to. And I just, I highlighted, I highlighted, I highlighted a lot of quotes that I really liked and yeah, I would recommend checking this out. <laughs> then the next book 
I read this month is Opal by Janelle Armitage, I gave two and a half stars, and it's the third book in the Lux series. In case you didn't know, because I talked about the Lux series, but the Lux series is about a girl named Katie who moves to West Virginia with her mom after her father has died, and she kind of starts to butt heads with this guy that lives next to all, and also kind of has a question on him, his name is Damon, and he turns out to be an alien. So, fun times! It's very, the first book is very reminiscent of Twilight and like how it feels, but then with aliens. I, when I first got on booktube, the series was described a lot as Twilight but with aliens. And for the first book, I definitely say yes. Um, plot wise, it's very different still, but like the feel you get from it is very much the same as Twilight. But like the later books don't really have that anymore, so <laughs> just giving you a heads up. I really love this series a lot. It is not the best quality stuff. Like I've given book one and two four stars because even though I really enjoyed it, I had a great time reading them. I couldn't give them five stars because I recognize that quality wise, they're not the best. <laughs> but there's just something that's so addictive about them, and I've noticed this a lot in Jennifer Armitage's other books as well. She just has that kind of writing, I guess. But this book didn't do it for me. The thing we have in the series is there's very minimal plot in a book, but <laughs> there's a lot of like filler moments that develop the characters and just how the characters interact. And those moments I loved in the first two books. And this book also had that, but it just made me feel bored. And I just was more feeling like get to the point, get to the actual plot because the actual plot was actually pretty interesting. I think is the most interesting we've gotten so far, but it just also isn't much, you know? My show is killing me, so I'm glad to announce that we finally reached the last book and that's what I have with me and I finished actually in this light, this night, I can't talk, I'm so sorry. And that's Frankly in Love by David Yoon, which I gave four or five stars to. This is again the first book in the duology. I believe it's the duology, and good because it has two books, so I'm assuming it will just be two books. But yeah, this book is about a guy named Frank Lee, and he's Korean American. He was born in America, but like his parents are both Korean. And basically, his parents only want him to fall in love with a Korean girl. But turns out, that's not how the world works, and he starts falling for a white girl. And he has a friend named Joy, who is a girl, and she Follow, she's in a relationship with a Chinese guy, which also isn't approved by her parents. So Joy and Frankly decide to fake date. I don't I keep referring to him as Frank Lee because in this book they refer I think more to him as Frank Lee than just Frank. So that's why I'm also doing it. Because that's first in his last name. And yeah, they fake date to keep their parents happy. And you know, stuff happens. It's why a contemporary figure that. <laughs> but yeah, I had a great time reading this. I actually annotated it, which I don't usually do when I read a book for the first time that isn't by an author I love or any series that I love because it's a debut novel, you know? But I was really excited about this book. I've heard some amazing reviews of it and it disappointed in a little way but not that much because I was still very addicted to this book and I wanted to keep reading and I just I flew through this book and I don't regret reading it all as far as I start. My main problem I had with this book is that the romance moved so fast. I got another sense there was insta love, like there was development, but I feel like at this point, like the romance plot was done. There's more going on, so I feel like this is justified. But when you just like the romance aspect felt done about like halfway through, maybe a little bit more. And therefore I just when it comes to the romance this is very romance focused book. When it came to the moments, it just fell flat a bit, like that last bit, because there wasn't much more to tell, you know? But when it came to the family and the friendships aspect, and uh, it takes place in senior year, so when it comes to going to college and having problems with like leaving your friends behind, this book does an amazing job of doing that. And that's the main thing I really liked. And you know, the moments weren't bad, but it just felt like David Yoon could have taken his time more with it, you know? And yeah, that's all the books I read in September. Let me know because I don't know what you thought of any of the books I talked about so you can discuss or what I saw the books you read in September. And I guess I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye. Here I am again, the same old situation. What does the gap thing have to be so complicated?